Hello, my name is Laura Beatrix Newmark, and I am the director of LABA at the 14th Street Y. LABA is a laboratory for Jewish culture where we select roughly 10 fellows each year, and we do a deep dive into Jewish text study um, in an open-minded and non-religious setting. And we have the fellows utilize this study to inspire work and performances like today and in our upcoming LABA Fest, our LABA Second Stages, and also in our Tikkun, which is an annual Shavuot event where we study and do art throughout the night. We are absolutely thrilled that for the next three Wednesdays, LABA Fellows will be showcasing their work in the virtual 14Y Artist um, Corner. So up first, we have LABA Fellows Willie Zabar and Leba Veinberg. In Zabar and Veinberg, you'll say you heard us when. Without further ado, possibly the next coming of Nichols and May, you hear are seeing them first here, Zabar and Veinberg. Zabar and Veinberg. You'll say you heard us when. Hello. I'm Liba Weinberg. And I'm Willie Zabar. We are Laba Humor Fellows, and we are totally and completely bored out of our minds. We got audio recording equipment, and we decided to make something for you to listen to. If you're hearing this, you're listening to it. You did your end of the bargain. This is us doing ours. Hello. I'm Liba Weinberg. And I'm... Oi, my name's Austin and I'm a real proud bloke. My name is Jane and I'm prejudiced. My mom is the last queen of Scotland. I got a wife named Jane and she's so beautiful but she's pretty prejudiced. I have an English accent, therefore I don't listen to anything anybody says because I'm sure that I am superior. I'm a big fan of the old soccer club where they play football. I like eating chips and fish and uh, my wife's name is Jane and she's so prejudice. I remember the first time she laid eyes on me, she uh, opened her mouth and said, What a waste of space. I'm going to marry that man. And then I ate a small biscuit and I felt fat about it. And then I drank some tea and I didn't feel good about that either. I'm still pretty racist and prejudiced. Oi, if there's one thing I'm the most proud about is that I've got a wife who's the most prejudiced in all the land. I'm also proud of the following things. My Shetland ponies, uh, my Blu-ray player, my sandy, sandy downstairs rooms, my ladder that goes all the way up to the top of Big Ben, uh, my big old eyeballs that let me see all the way to the White Cliffs of Dover, over, my big old hat that could uh, hold uh, 10 pounds of herring. Uh, uh, I got a marker that they say is permanent. Uh, I got me uh, a friendship with Sir Michael Caine. Uh, I got myself a tree that grows cherries with no pits in the cherries. I got myself a, an officerial commission in the Royal Navy. I got myself two good eyes. I got myself uh, two big hands and a heart pumping blood in the 1967 Colt 45 with a busted safety catch. Uh, I got myself the Jimi Hendrix box set. I'm proud of my eyes. I'm proud of my thighs. I'm proud of Methuselah. I'm proud of Medusa. I'm prejudiced against all people who own pets. I'm prejudiced against people who don't eat toast in the mornings. They're savages. I'm prejudiced against people who wear two jackets. I don't get it. I'm prejudiced against people who floss. I think it's pretentious. I'm prejudiced against people who 
use binders. I'm prejudiced against people who bend paper clips out of shape. They are the devil. I'm prejudiced against people who play musical instruments. What do you think you are in a circus? I'm prejudiced against people who sing little songs to themselves because they are assholes. I'm prejudiced against people who listen to podcasts. Oi. Sit down and have a quiet interlude with the classic. Take a walk with those familiar characters, that famous story, a parable of love, marriage, and racism. A more honest passage has never been written than that of Jane and Austen, a couple of assholes in the United Kingdom. Pride and Prejudice. Sign up now at No Eyes Audiobooks. Oi, my name's Austin and I'm a real proud bloke. My name is Jane and I'm... Hi, welcome to uh, foodradio.com. I'm your host, and I'm here to interview uh, one of the uh, biggest rising chefs in the culinary world. Hi. Hi. Um, Thank you so much for having me. I've had a really rough week. So what have you been, uh, what have you been, uh, what have you been uh, working on? I'm going to take you through like a classic breakfast, all right? Um, And this is something anybody can do. Um, So I wake up and... I go downstairs and I, I, I take a box of uh, saltines. Um, I take out about 24 saltines um, and I gently stack them one on top of the other. Um, and then I try to put as many as possible in my mouth as quickly as possible. Um, and then you really want to pair that with like a nice glass of water um especially in quarantine time it's really good to stay hydrated uh so that you know a lot you, you it's okay to cry um and it's easier to cry if you get your salt from your saltines and your hydration right up top right out of the gate so that's that's a very popular breakfast with my readers and my followers um highly recommend that you start with that uh should we talk about lunch do you want to talk about lunch uh i think we should talk about lunch yeah let's talk about lunch so lunch is lunch is really complicated during times of quarantine so i want to simplify it for you um i know that lots of people think lunch is something that's supposed to happen around like 12 um, but nothing is supposed to happen anymore so you can have lunch right after breakfast Um, you can have lunch three to four times in afternoon um, and you can have lunch right before dinner you can do all of the above but i would recommend that um, for lunch, I, I, I usually, um, I take a bag of chips, um, and these can be any chips. You can do whatever you want, you know? Um, and then I pull out a bowl. I put a bunch of chips in the bowl, like, you know, assorted. Um, and then I get out some hummus, um, and I get out some peanut butter, uh, and then I get out some Nutella, and then I get out some, Uh, ketchup uh, and then I get out some mustard and then I get out uh, some cheese dip and then I get out some whipped cream and then it's really dealer's choice wow what an astounding amount of variety within one meal it's really important to hit all the food groups especially in quarantine and now I'm I've I've read your book thank you and There is one tip in there that I think we should share with the readers, because I noticed you said Nutella, and I don't know about you, I'm all, uh, I'm all about Nutella, all right? I'm a, I'm a Nutella kind of guy, uh, and you said something in your book where you say, you know, if you don't have a spoon clean or readily available, there is something else you can do. Do you want to talk about that? I do want to talk about that. 
Um, I think in this time and age, we're all washing our hands so much. And I think it's an opportunity to finally start eating Nutella the way it's supposed to be eaten, which is full frontal, hands, body. That's just an easy way to actually lean into who you are now. Um, and I think, you know, people have been eating since the beginning of time and we need to stop pretending that they haven't. Wow. Powerful words. Now, I heard it was your birthday recently, so I was wondering if you could tell us about how you kind of splurge for the holidays. Um, I totally splurged. I got a jug of orange juice and a bottle of white wine, and I poured that all into an enormous punch bowl. Uh, and then I cut a lemon in half and squeezed it in there, and then I mixed all of it up and I poured it into my bathtub and then I bought a cake and I ate the cake and then I drank the marinated juice in the bathtub and a lot of people think that this was a weird thing to do uh, and all I have to say is I live alone and I have a book that I wrote. The way to get my book is to go to my Instagram and take screenshots of all of my Insta stories and print them out. Well, I'll tell you this. I can't wait to try out these recipes, and I hope this quarantine never ends. It will never end for me, I don't think. I am pretty sure I'm going to be eating this kind of food and living this kind of life forever. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Leva, have you ever been washing your hands and said, I don't have any soap? Oh my God, I've been waiting for someone to ask me about this for a long time. I, it happens to me all the time. What do I do? I'll tell you what you do. You use a wonderful new product called soap. Soap? Soap. You use it to wash your hands. Do they make that out of them whales? Absolutely they do. We have a fleet of whaling vessels out of Nantucket Island. Getting the fat out the whale, mixing it with lye, and making some soap just for you. Ah. Every whale consents to this process and says, I want to be soap. And so we kill that f***ing whale dead. It's a new day. It's a new day. And I didn't know they ask all the whales. Do you speak whale? Yes, I do. I'm so glad you asked. You want to hear some whale? I do. I have a question. Are all of these whales American? No. They are all foreign-born whales. Right for the picking. It is our manifest destiny. And so we salute the whales and say, thank you, whales, for letting us kill you. I have two nieces. If I buy two bars of soap, is there some kind of discount? There is. You can buy two bars of soap for the price of 1.85 bars of soap. Thank you so much. Well, now, if there are any ladies listening out there, you know how to get your soap. And you know that it won't be any American whale. I once took seven bars of soap to a party, and you know how many soaps I soaped? How many soaps? Seven. And then someone said, come back over with another seven. And now I have two new friends. Wow, you heard it here. The more soap you sell, the more friends you'll have. The more people you have selling soap for you, the more money you will make. It's a system inspired by the Egyptians. I'm just so happy that we were able to have this segment. I mean, that's what a man is for, right? For telling me what to do, and then I can go tell my friends what to do and sell them whatever the man told me to sell. Did I get that right? Honey, I would have told you if you didn't. Hi, everybody. This is Laura, and I'm checking back in with personal stories from the ground up. And today I thought I would call my mom just to check in on her during the pandemic and see how she's doing. I thought I'd share that with all of you live on the air. Hold on. I'm just going to punch her through. 
Mom? Hello? Mom, can you hear me? Laura? Yep. Hi, it's Laura. Me. Hi. It's one second. It's Laura. It's La No, stop. Stop. Yeah, it's Laura. Hi. Hi. Hi, Mom. I'm just checking in to see how you're doing. I'm are you all right? You have food? Are you healthy? Oh, everything's fine. Don't worry about me. How are you? Are you okay? When you call me, the first thing I w you should be saying is everything's okay. Because otherwise, I'm thinking, is she under arrest? Is she kidnapped by the ISIS? Can you can you do me that favor, honey? Can you just, when you call me up, when you call me up, just to make, make me happy. Make your mama happy. Just say everything's okay. Hi, Mom. In fact, say everything's okay and then say it's Laura so that I know it's you after I know it's okay. Okay? It's Laura. Hi. Uh, pretty sure ISIS hasn't been a concern for a long time. <laughs> Maybe not for you. Uh, has ISIS been a concern for you? Y your father and I have been talking. We're still not over Al-Qaeda. So ISIS is still very much in the front of our brain. We're, we're worried about you. That's what mothers do. We're worried. Okay, let me worry. Okay, you worry about you and I'll worry about you. Mom, I'm just letting you know right now you're live on air. Oh! We're talking about the pandemic. Oh, the corona one, right? That's the one. That's yeah. the one. Is there another pandemic, Mom? That I don't know. About? I don't know. You're the one. I don't, you know me? I, I only know what I, you tell me and what I watch on CNN uh, all day, every day. And it is mostly corona on there. Remember when, remember when, the, remember when, the, remember when the, the Malaysian Airlines, remember it, it disappeared? And all that, all that CNN would talk about was uh, the Malaysian Airlines. And now it's like that, but it's corona. But I think that more people are dead from Corona than from on the Malaysian Airlines, right? I think you're absolutely right, Ma. I do think that more people are dead from Corona than from Malaysian Airlines. I think you hit that one right on the nose. Oh, stop. I get it from you, honey. Well, what kind of advice would you give out there for, for young women and families? Okay, here's the first piece of advice. If you go to a store... And let's say you want to buy some cereal, and you see that front box of cereal, don't buy that one, because that's the one that everyone touched, that's the one that fell on the floor. So what you do is you pick that up and you get the one behind it, and then you put it back, so that you get the good one. Uh, other I pieces have a of question. advice. What, you got a question? Aren't you contributing to the problem if you touch the front cereal box and then move it back? Yeah, no, because it's about me and my family. If you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. Yeah, listen, so your father and I, we try not to shop. We use a service called uh, Victory Garden where we grow our own crops and it didn't work. And so we're shopping again. You tried to grow your own crops, Ma? We tried to grow our own crops. Apparently, uh, you, you bury the, the skin of a potato as fertilizer, but all that was growing is potatoes. And you no, your father can't eat potatoes because of the war. The war, Ma? Mm-hmm. You remember that your father fought in the war? Which war? Desert Storm! Mom, are you okay? I'm great. How are you? Are you okay? You sound COVID-ish. Uh, I, Mom, I think it's COVID. Honey, I think a mother would know, okay? Do you think that's how they test for COVID? Do you think they just have a Jewish mother come in there and, and uh, sniff it out? Oh, wait, one second. There's ducks outside. David! David, look at the... Da David! David! David, look at the ducks. Look at the ducks outside. There's ducks outside. Uh, honey, there's ducks outside. Laura. That's Laura. I'm here. Look, I, oh, how, I wish, I wish, I wish I could take a photo with my phone, uh, but I'm talking with you on the phone, so I can't because I'd have to stop talking to you, and I don't want to do. Back back in the day, we would have a phone and a camera and they were two different things and you probably don't remember this but remember cameras we would send you to sleepaway camp with those disposable cameras uh and you don't throw them out in the regular garbage because they have batteries you could be on the phone like with mrs winslow and you could say hi mrs winslow wait one second there's ducks outside and you take your camera in your other hand and you take a picture of the duck how are you mom, are you okay i'm pretty sure you can do that now honey you shouldn't throw out batteries all right mom honey Honey? Honey? Yes, Mom. Don't throw out batteries. I don't know the last time I touched a battery. Okay. Okay. Don't get defensive. Don't talk to me. Okay. No, I'm just. I'm listen, not being defensive. Listen, I'm not listen, being listen, defensive. Listen, 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 listen
Are you listening? Yeah. Okay. How are you? Well, well I, I, I'm upset now. What? What happened? Well, I, you said I was defensive. Well, now, now you're definitely defensive. Listen, honey, you asked my opinion, and I'm giving it to you. And if you don't like it, then you shouldn't have asked for it. Well, okay. okay. One second, David. One second, David. You want to talk to her? No, I'm talking to her. No, go away. Yes, honey. I just feel like sometimes I call you, and you can't actually pick up the phone, but you pick up the phone anyway, and you're distracted the whole time. Honey, you have 101% of my attention. Like, remember that movie you loved growing up with the Dalmatian dogs? Uh, apparently, they're not good with children, so people saw that movie, and they got the Dalmatian dogs, and then it bit their... Do you remember Sophia? Remember Sophia from uh, kindergarten? She, she, her family got a Dalmatian after this saw the 101 Dalmatian movie and it bit it bit her on the hand and I don't know if it broke the skin but they brought the dog back it just feels mom it, it feels like you are the one person who can control whether or not you pick up the phone so why why would you pick up the phone if you can't pick up the phone honey I was able to I'm on the phone yeah but you're talking to me about Dalmatians and I'm asking you how we should handle a pandemic honey this is what my mother said to me and I'm gonna say it to you I hope it's not some sexist bullshit it's not sexist to want my daughter to get married oh my god I want grandkids mom I know you want grandkids. You don't need to tell me you want grandkids. I don't need a gentle reminder. I don't need a nudge. The message has been received loud and clear. I understand that you want grandkids. Okay, well then, you know, chop chop. You say that, you say you understand, but I'm not seeing the evidence that you understand. Just because I understand that you said something, mom, doesn't mean that I am going to do it. There is a difference between hearing someone say something and then doing it. You asked. I'm telling you. I asked, how are you and how are you faring during the pandemic? This is how I'm doing. This is how I'm doing. I'm getting up there in years. I'm not as young as I used to be. And I'm just saying, uh, I want a grandkid before. Before I die, God forbid it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. But God forbid if it happens, which it will, I want a grandkid to be there. To be where? You want a grandkid to be there when you die? Yeah. Is that so much to ask? You want a grandchild to watch you die? What if I watch you die? Is that not enough? Oh, uh, my death is witnessed by an old maid. Yeah. Oh, great. I just need my death to be blessed by the presence of progeny. Is that so much to ask? It is, actually. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around the fact that you are worried that there will be old maids at your death. Your Shiva is going to be just me and all my friends, and we will all be old maids. Honey, the Shiva is for the living. The deathbed is for the dying. If you want to have the Shiva at Chuck E. Cheese or Laser Park or Sport Time USA, you can do that. But when I'm dying, I don't think it's so much to ask that my death be about me. And personally, I want grandchildren to be there. I want their little eyes looking at my little beady dying eyes. I want them to see me leave this earth. Otherwise, I can't go to the afterlife. Thanks so much for calling in, Mom. Um, it was really lovely to touch base with you and I'm, I'm sure that you, there are so many little nuggets of wisdom that you have left for us and for our, our listeners stay inside please don't talk to anybody ever I actually think you could take this advice and roll with it for a long time ma okay I want you to be safe. Okay, I, I want the best for you too, honey. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Your father is asleep. You can call him back uh, later on his cell phone. Uh, he has to get up and walk the dog later, so he'll be up. Love you, Ma. Love you too. Bye. Hi, everybody. This is Laura, and I'm checking back in with... That's it for episode one. Thanks for listening. We're going to make some more of these. We're just going to work out what we're seeing, what we're not seeing, what we wish we were seeing, and then you're going to listen to it. Hope you tune in.